Do go ahead with that new museum. Let's hope there's room for Galt and Hogg as well, the two great writers that are perhaps overlooked these days. Well, let's look abroad a little bit now. The new government at Holyrood is definitely keen to make its mark in the field of international relationships. And so one issue with regard to that is the subject of Malawi. The Malawi c connection has been huge, building upon the policies, of course, of the previous Labour administration, Jack McConnell, who is now to be uh, likely to be the, um, the High Commissioner in Malawi. Let's uh, take a look at that issue. Alex Salmond meets a delegation from Malawi, Scotland's partner country in Africa. The First Minister is building upon links forged by his predecessor, Jack McConnell, who is now set to become the High Commissioner in Malawi. The contact with Scotland dates back to David Livingstone, who is revered in the African nation. The SNP want to deepen and broaden those links. And we attended the f first minister's question time. Oh, we did enjoy it. Yes, yes. Oh, excellent. Very good. Enjoyed yes, that yeah. very much. Well, I think more is the, the heart of the Highlands, and we're very proud of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. It's within very, very easy reach. Beautiful country. Oh, it's it is. spectacular. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Malawi is a beautiful country. It is. Yeah, indeed. Yes. Indeed. We're going to try and get the First Minister to Malawi at some point. Well, that would be a great, years. great honour. I look forward yes. to that, yes. I hope you can make your first visit to Africa, to Malawi. All right. Well, <laughs> yes. After all, we have this very special relationship, of course. You know, which is symbolised by the Malawi-Scotland partnership. Mm. You know, two years ago, we came here, a high-power delegation led by the president, which mm. was very successful. Mm. And at that time, we thought, well, how about having a similar conference in Malawi? Mm. So that would be very good. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Yes. Why don't we just set our minds to doing that? When we became the government, one of the first pledges we made was to double the international aid budget that we have from the previous Scottish executive and seek to expand that to other sub-Saharan developing nations. The Livingston Scholars came about with the idea because of the massive historical footprint of David Livingston and just the significance and the importance that he has, particularly in Malawi and particularly in Zambia. What we want to do is build on that legacy and involve our universities, because so many people in Malawi, in Zambia, in the civil service and in politics are products of our Scottish universities. So let's bring together Livingston and our Scottish universities in a combined project for the benefit of countries like Malawi. You know, Malawi is a poor country. 60% of our population live be below the poverty line. 95% of the population live in the countryside, depending on uh, agriculture. Therefore, we have to develop not only agriculture to empower the people, but develop education. And education is rather backward, and that's why we do cherish the relationship which we have between Scotland and Malawi. So there perhaps one element of continuity from the previous administration to the new one is continuing to build those links with Malawi, as I described it there, Scotland's partner in Africa. Now let's go back to that thing they were debating a few minutes ago, the, the books business, the business of the, of the Museum of, of Writers. Linda Fabiani has come Hi. down from the stage. Thank you very much for joining us. What was the outcome of the vote? Have they agreed to remit? Or? Yes, a conference agreed to remit back. In fact, Paul Scott, who proposed the resolution in the first place, it took comfort from what I said. Were you just, and uh, what, what, what was it? Were you just sceptical about whether this is a, a practical proposal no, or, or no, what? No, no, no scepticism at all. Um, what I was saying was that we shouldn't just commit to a particular way forward. We should look at all the options, bearing in mind that Edinburgh City Council already have a writer's museum. It's not for me to say that's meaningless, I'm going to impose something else. Um, and also, there's new ways of working these days. When you look at the John Murray Archive, for example, that's up in the National Library of Scotland, fantastic resource. There's new ways of doing museum work. It's got to be a learning resource, it's interactive. So we shouldn't just be saying we want to commit a building or part of a building to hosting books and, you know, and having people come visit. It's how can this country get the best out of the wonderful tradition of our literature and how can we make sure that we portray it in the best possible way. Who's, so I'll look at it. Who's your own favourite? Who's your own favourite writer? Oh, it's very, very difficult. <clears throat> Alistair Gray, I just Alistair Gray, absolutely good. adore. Uh, Robin Jenkins, to ah. tell a story. There was never empty to Robin Jenkins. Cetera, fabulous, oh, every yeah. one of them. Yeah. A wonderful, wonderful storyteller. Contemporary writers. Uh, I love Christopher Brookmeyer. Uh -huh. uh, I love the way he writes. 
but I, I just you see, prolifically. You see the problem, you see, I, I, would, I would agree with all of those, especially Chris Whitmire and, 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 and Robin Jenkins, but then you're starting, the list is getting, whoa, I know, this I know. length, Hogg, Scott, Gold, uh, Burns, so Stevenson, Henderson, Absolutely. the bar, Douglas. You yeah, can, you James can, Robertson's writing, yeah. uh, another contemporary I love, and A.L. Kennedy. Do you know, what, what a talent so how can have? you have a museum with, 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 with that? I mean, or, or should we not? Should we just abandon the idea? I don't think we can abandon the idea. It, it all depends on the connotation of the word museum. You know, when, when people now think of museum, you think of a building. Uh, but if you take museum as meaning collection, you can be talking archive, you can be talking digitalisation, learning access, packs, uh -huh. you know, something that everyone in the country can easily have access to, travelling exhibitions from a central base. There's loads of ideas. I want us to be as imaginative as our literary people have been. And uh, never just say there's one solution fits all. Let's listen to what people want. Now, let's extend it to some other areas yeah. of the remit. We had the, the, the mention there of the, the, the team, the, the, the small parties from Malawi coming yeah. over. It's, it's an area yeah. you're, as a minister, was responsible for. Do you believe there has been some suggestions <laughs> in the past that while the, the, the links are valuable and the links are welcome and you are doubling the resources... Has the money been well spent, in your view? Well, you know, when the commitment was made to Malawi, it was the Scottish Government and the Scottish Parliament. It was unanimous. <coughs> Excuse me. There was no dissenting voice because there's a recognition of that very special relationship. We're, what, two or three years down the line? Uh, I think the time was right for a review, regardless of who came into power after the election there, because this issue is too important for party politics. The time was right for a review. They'd had the first lot of funding. I'm now carrying out that review, but I want to carry it out in the same spirit as went before, which is moving forward with cross-party support in the Parliament and absolutely everyone being behind what we're doing. That's why I want to be so open and transparent about it. Are you it. talking about what, refocusing the funding or what, or do you yeah. think some has been wasted? Well, I, I think we have to look at what has worked. Some think things that maybe haven't worked quite so well. But what's most important is the focus on what's best for Malawi. And I have to do that in conjunction with the Malawian government and with those who are working in the field in Malawi. The days of imposition through international development are well, well past. It's all about working together. And we also have to recognise that what Scotland has in putting forward, although small, is very, very special. So I want to see us doing something with it that's recognisable and special, because that's the way that we can build that very special relationship between Malawi and Scotland. Okay, finally, final question. Something really utterly different. I learned oh, from, dear. Learned from The <laughs> Guardian this morning that you've oh. been in talks with Donovan, the, oh, the, Donovan. 60s, the 60s singer, well, the hardy-gardy man and all oh. that sort of thing. How, mellow yellow, I'm Mellow sure. yellow, yes. <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you. A, um, a music, a, what is it, a university of transcendental, transcendental meditation? meditation. Uh, Donovan and David Edinburgh. Lynch have been going around the country, of course, Orgasm. espousing uh -huh. this. Uh, and it's all very interesting. So I was delighted David to Lynch, meet the film, film the director. Film director. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. it was a great thrill for me to, to meet David Lynch. But I had met Donovan before, you know. When I was, I told him about this. It's well, obviously karma. Uh, when I was about nine or ten years old, I bumped into him in the art gallery in Glasgow, which is now, of course, Kelvin Grove. In these days, we all called it the art gallery. Uh -huh. And uh, my friend and I, and he bought us ice cream and he bought us Coca-Cola and gave us autographs and all sorts of things. So it was lovely, what, so, 40 so, so, years down the line to so meet so up So now he's going to get his University of Transcendental <laughs> Meditation in Glasgow oh, because he bought you a cone. I don't think politics <laughs> is that simple, is it? <laughs> is it likely to go ahead? Well, that's up to them. I mean, it's, they, were, they weren't looking for any kind of funding or, or anything like that because there's a David Lynch Foundation which is doing these things already in America. I think they just wanted to, to tell me uh, what it was that they were doing, and it was interesting. Fascinating stuff. Peace and love, Minister. Peace and love. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for that.